Dom here from Essential RC. Thanks for tuning in for this video. This is the new Atom RC Beluga, an RC aeroplane designed specifically for FPV flying. What do I mean by FPV? First person view. So as the pilot on the ground flying this RC aeroplane, I'll be wearing these FPV goggles and it will give me the view from the FPV camera that's in the cockpit. It makes for a really immersive and almost virtual reality feel to flying and it gives me that view as if I'm the pilot in the cockpit. Now I've done this with lots of models including RC jets, warbirds and gliders but what I really enjoy doing is adding head tracking because it just gives you that extra le level of immersion. As I move my head the camera moves left and right, panning left and right, up and down, and also with this, it rolls as well. Now, this is a new product, a couple of new products on the market. This is the CF Head Tracker, the XF Head Tracker rather, and this is uh, the XF C20T, a three axis gimbal that works seamlessly with that head tracker. This is made by XF Robot, and available from my friends at banggood.com. So this video is all about how to get these products, how to assemble them, how to configure them, and also how to operate them as well. So when you order these products, you need to make sure that you order the right versions. Now here I'm covering DJI 03. So there is a standard and a DJI 03 version of this gimbal. So you see here I've clicked on the DJI 03 specific version on the page. I would add that to the cart. And then I would move to the accessory pack, which it covers both versions of the gimbal, but is necessary because it contains the head tracker, the mount plate kit and the fan and all of the wires that you need to put this together. So order both at the same time. So here's the gimbal out of the box with the backing plate from the accessories pack. And what we're going to do first is just bolt the gimbal onto that mounting plate. Next, take your DJI 03 FPV camera and VTX and remove the two screws on either side of the back of the O3 camera. With the back of the camera removed, we can then use the insulation tool to gently lever off the plug for the wire to the VTX from the back of the camera. Next step is to undo four screws so the camera itself can be pulled out of the front part of the case. Push this plug from the gimbal onto the back of the connector of the FPV camera. Click the lens protection ring onto the lens mount from the gimbal kit. Drop the FPV camera into it and secure that in place with the four screws that you took and undid from the DJI camera case. Now attach that assembly into the gimbal using four new screws from the gimbal kit. Now moving to the DJI 03 VTX, undo two screws so the cover can be removed and using the provided blue installation tool you can carefully lever the cable off the VTX. Plug the gimbal cable into the VTX and reattach the cover with the two screws. Find this cable in the accessories pack and plug it into the gimbal and the mounting plate. Take the O3 air unit mount and the fan and put those together using the provided long screws. Then click the VTX or air unit as they call it into the air unit mount like this. Now you can bolt that air unit assembly with the fan onto the mounting plate with the provided bolts. Use the provided cable to connect the receiver part of the head tracker data link into the mounting plate. So that's the gimbal more or less complete with the exception of some cabling which I'll cover at the end. 
but now we can focus on the head tracker that will attach to your FPV goggles. So you will find the transmitter part of the head tracker data link in the pack. Take that and press that in, press it well, press it very carefully into the 3D printed case. The data link transmitter connects into the head tracker using four pins. Carefully align those pins, but before you press it into place, peel off the backing paper from the double sided tape and then press into place on the head tracker. Okay, so that's assembly of the C20T gimbal done with the DJI 03 camera in there, the VTX in there or air unit and the fan on top and for this particular model I've had to screw this onto the mounting plate onto a ply plate that I've glued on top of the canopy frame but the next thing to talk about is the cables because there are quite a lot of cables and it took me a while to decipher what they mean so if you look at it like that the this cable here it connects the gimbal to the mounting plate. Again, the cable is provided in the kit. The next one is the DJI 03 three in one cable that you get with the DJI 03 FPV camera. Um, so that plugs in on that plug, one lower down, and goes into the back of the air unit. Then you've got the power for the fan that goes into that one there. Swapping to this side, this cable is for the gimbal. Again, it's provided in the kit. Now you can do a lot through this, uh, the gimbal, but the gimbal cable, but the main thing you need to do is to power it. So I'm powering it through a balance plug that goes into a three cell LiPo, but you could, you could put an XT60 on this, you could put this into uh, a flight controller, as long as it's getting uh, between 2S and 6S volts, then that is fine. The other leads or wires on this uh, are to PM, PWM channels, which give you uh, different levels of control over the gimbal. The first one is for selection of different modes and then the others are for independent control of the pan, tilt and roll aspects of the gimbal. But I'm choosing not to do that, I'm just using head tracking and with the, uh, the receiver and transmitter on the head tracker that's what it does out of the box which is very very handy. Moving back to this one. This is basically for the air unit. So again, you need to provide power to the air unit. Uh, again, I think it's 2S to 6S to DJI 03. And then this one is for, uh, I've, and you notice I've used DuPont connectors on these. It gives me just flexibility in when to plug these things in rather than soldering directly to the flight controller it means I can take the whole canopy off. So in this game you really do need to get into using DuPont connectors and, and crimping pins. Uh, one of the things you do need to learn when you're using flight controllers. But uh, as I was saying this one is for TX and RX, how it exchange gets and sends information to the air unit from the flight controller. So. Uh, TX on this goes to RX on the flight controller and vice versa for RX. Uh, and the last cable here goes to the receiver. So that goes underneath my canopy frame and goes to the, uh, the data link receiver. which is receiving information from the head tracker transmitter data link.
on that got mounted on top of the goggles too. What you also get in the pack nicely is the uh, USB cable that plugs into that port there if you can see it just behind the gimbal so that is good for two things for upgrading the firmware on the gimbal which you might need to do if there are bug fixes or enhancements to the firmware that runs on the gimbal and also for um, any configuration that you need to do there's a little app that you can download from xf robot that enables you to uh, change different things and one of those could be as i was saying earlier the the acceleration or the rate of a turn of the gimbal relative to your head movement it'd be very useful for that okay so now i've got it assembled and wired up correctly how about operation so the head tracker has a small battery inside it that is charged up via the usb-c plug there if you want to see how much battery it has or how much voltage then uh, you've got three buttons on this side of the head tracker you've got the mode button positive uh, plus and minus click once on the mode button and you'll see the indicator lights three of them light up to show you the amount of charge you've got in that battery to turn on the head tracker one click and then hold down you hear uh, some beeps and then that is on provide power to the gimbal so i'm connecting in a three cell small three cell lipo into the balance plug but it could be an xt60 or an xt30 in this case So that's powered up. Now when you do this for the first time, you need to connect the receiver and transmitter. So hold down the button on the transmitter. Until you get rapid flashing of that light. Hold down the button on the receiver until you get rapid flashing on that and then after about two or three seconds that should stop flashing and now you've got them you've got them working together notice how it's not centered to center hold down the button mode button on the head tracker and that is centered The mode button lets you go between three different modes. I'm mo most interested in the FPV mode rather than the other two modes, which lock um, the different axes on the, on the gimbal. But you just use one click to go through those. I'm currently, you can see that I'm currently in one of those lock modes. So it is locked to, I think, I think it's mostly locked to roll. But if I click once again, yeah, so that's locked on roll. That is now not locked on roll. That's FPV mode. And you can cycle through those and have a play with them and see what most suits your, what you need to do. The plus and the minus, looking up in the manual, is about what they call uh, sensitivity which again for me I don't think is really uh, applicable but I'll have a play with that on uh, my first flights of the Atom RC Beluga. So here I'm showing the gimbal config application on my laptop that you can download from XF Robot. I've connected my laptop via USB to the gimbal using the USB cable that they provide and the US my USB-C cable. You'll want to use this if you want to see what's happening to the gimbal in real time. You might be controlling it via the head tracker or PWM channels. That's up to you, but a useful tool for that. 
It's also useful for calibration should you need to do that. You won't need to out of the box. It, it, it's already uh, been calibrated. But if you do need to upgrade the firmware, this is on, this out of the box came with 3.5. I saw on the, the uh, XF Robot website that they had 3.6, I upgraded to that, and it broke the ability for the data link head tracking to work. So I had to downgrade, but they didn't have 3.5 available, the current version. So I had to go and look on CADEX FPV and get the version 3.4, installed that, and now it's working again. So just be wary of that issue. I'll report that to XF Robot. Okay, and here I'm showing the CW head tracker application that you can download from XF Robot. This again shows you what is happening in real time, but with the head tracker, I've got the head tracker plugged in via USB C. But where I found this is really useful is if I want to change that ratio I was talking about, the ratio of your head movement to the movement of the, uh, of the head tracker and therefore the, the gimbal. So I've changed it up by a factor of three. So what you can see here is that it's the, uh, in pitch, you can see how it's moving a lot more than I'm actually moving the head tracker itself. And why is that useful? I think it's really useful when you're flying fixed wing FPV and whether you're sitting down or standing up when you fly FPV, but could you imagine that you want to look behind? You want the gimbal to rotate 180 degrees, but if you're standing up or <laughs> even more difficult when you're sitting down, if you, you can't turn your head 180 degrees. So by doing that, by changing up the, the ratio, it enables you with a little head movement to achieve the same thing. Obviously also with this tool, you can calibrate the head tracker you, and you can upgrade as well using the provided upgrade firmware from XF Robot. So there you go. I hope that helps you put together this type of gimbal and head tracker if you decide to go this route with DJI 03 or 04. If you're not subscribed to Essential RC, then please click that button and maybe give a thumbs up or a like. That would be appreciated. But as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.